Let's podcast alongside Joe Giglio. I'm Joe Ovias inside Eford Studios in downtown Raleigh. Thanks to our friends at Empire Properties. And thanks to our friends at Copiers Plus. Check them out online at copiers-plus.com. Print assessment is crucial right now. Don't act like things are easing up in the summer. You got to stay ready. You got to stay ready with your document management. So you never know. You never know. That might come up later in the podcast. So you never know when you're going to get surprised by some weird costs, right? So make sure you get a handle on it and contact our friends at copiers plus. Dot com. You, you know, though, if, if you were paying attention to this podcast, nothing would surprise you. you. You'd be ready for everything that happened over this weekend. What an all time weekend for Joe was right. All time. Yeah. You want to do you want to do like a lightning round of <laughs> Joe was right? I mean, Joe was right. Lightning round edition. Uh, the president's trophy. Once again, <laughs> strikes <laughs> Rangers going home. Uh, yes, Igor Shostakovich, good again, yeah, but not quite good enough. Mm-hmm. Still, will not have his name on the Stanley Cup. Congratulations to the Florida Panthers. Congratulations to the Edmonton Oilers. Mm-hmm. I was wrong about that side, though. I have to admit when I'm wrong. Okay, uh, I thought the Stars would come through, but the Stars really are the Canes. When you watch the Stars, Dude. you're like, you are the same team. J- Jacob, <laughs> uh, I'm watching last night, and what was the, the what was the shot count? The Oilers were up two. Oilers <laughs> were up two zero at that point. And Jacob's walking by the television. He looks up at the scoreboard and he goes, 28 to 8? 28 shots to 8? And I looked at Jacob and I said, dude, how many Canes games have we gone to? Like, this is, you You've should know this. by now. He's like, you should know by now that shots on goal is a useless stat, period. Okay? Useless. He's like, oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. I mean, even his, even his experience. I'm like, how many times have you been in a youth hockey game where you feel like you're peppering the goalie with shots, but they're not good shots. Not good shots. Yeah, so anyway, there's a difference in quality. Yes. Uh, I told you Arizona was fraudulent and did not belong as a one of the top 16 seeds. You that did. was that was cu- purely the uh, Girl Scout cookie marathon that the NCAA pulls off in, every year in order to save a couple of dollars. Mm-hmm. They are no longer in the NCAA tournament. Uh, I told you this was the SEC ACC Invitational. Hey, real, real quick. I'm sorry. You're distracting me. Yeah. Do you have I'm notes out of yellow pads? Man. Do you have notes <laughs> on the back? No, hold on a second. You have notes on the back of an unopened NC quick pass. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You should open that now. <laughs> don't fall into the mistake that I've no, made. no, no, no. I'll pay. Dude, yeah. I'll take care Dude, of it. Cause if you don't pay that thing on time, <laughs> as I have discovered, <laughs> oh, it, it multiplies. Oh, I'll get to that email. Oh, yeah, I'll pay it. I'll pay it. I'm like, Whoa, you, you think 30 bookies, bucks. You think bookies in New Jersey charge the juice. <laughs> NC Quick Pass, ladies and gentlemen, they will get you. Cousin Nunzio went from running numbers in Bayonne <laughs> to the NC Quick Pass. <laughs> anyway, back to, back to college baseball. NC State off to the Super Regionals. Yeah, they're going to one see... of four ACC teams to advance. There's yeah. four SEC teams that have advanced. Yeah, and we are looking at the ACC SEC Invitational in Omaha. Yeah, and uh, ECU still alive today. What a great wild uh, baseball game encapsulated. I really wanted to put, if we had like people who worked for us, and maybe I can get Tanner or someone to help us out this summer, Mm -hmm. I would put a super clip of you saying, I know nothing about college baseball, but the bullpens, man, once it gets to the bullpens, that ninth inning of the ECU Wake Forest game was college baseball either at its finest uh-huh. or at its worst. I would it say just finest. De- it just depends on what your point of view is. I would say I finest. was absolutely sick for ECU. I was sick for them. Mm-hmm. They are a great program. They've done so many good things, but they can't do that one last thing. And they still have a chance this year, I know, but. Yeah, they're up. for 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 context purposes. They play. We're recording this right now at eight thirty six on a Monday morning. They're playing at noon, noon today. So so yeah, I mean, and I, and they're big favorites today to beat Evansville. I hope they get through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're up four runs. They're absolutely dominating this game. And then Cliff Godwin goes full galaxy brain and is like, "I'm I'm gonna I'm Joe Madden. I have the, I have the biggest bullpen, the greatest bullpen of all time. I'm gonna mix and match." And it's like, just let Growler yeah. throw. The, the the five outs and finish yeah. the game, sir. Yeah, please. Yeah. So Wake rallies. They score four runs. Now they're up, and now ECU's down. And Wake with their pitching lab and preseason number one and two outs away from a from a national title last year. Then they give up four runs or whatever it was, and I'm like, 
what on earth is happening? But again, back to my point, if we had like an intern or someone, I would have them super cut like you being like, you know, I really don't know that much about college baseball. No, you fucking know everything you need to know about college, college pitching, baseball. Baby. College pitching. You hit it. No, you did it. So <laughs> CJ, CJ Zero caught this. I, and I had I had put this out there. I had, I had retweeted or rethreaded or however you want to put it um, in that uh, North Carolina is special 365 days out of the year because there was this clip <laughs> ECU fan letting Wake Forest oh, yeah. fans hear it. I can't effing hear you. What happened? Nah, nah, nah. Hey, hey, goodbye. F you. And she is feeling that's the jungle, baby. Yes. Welcome to the jungle. Your pitching bullpen is about to die. <laughs> so, dude, that was such a wild ninth. Day. I mean, the range of emotions. Uh, but that's but the, honestly, but that's been that's been ECU's kind of Achilles, right? It's, it's been their bullpen. It's been their pitching. I'll be curious to see what happens today. Well, look, I mean, NC State, like, to get back to NC State, things have been kind of like they had everything go right for them this weekend. Went three, three in a row. Their Wild. bullpen was good. The only nitpick was they left 16 runners on base in the clincher. Oh, yeah, that was a little bit of a, a mess there. It, it, and, speaking of things that went right for them, though. And the Kylo Ren, the prince who was promised, who comes out to be your regional uh, MOP. As you, hey, Mac. You, do you want? Do you want another Joe? Was right. You're I know, like, hey, here's your guy. He he I, produced. I wish. I really do wish he was still at ECU. <laughs> Why? I know he's been so good because that's what they're missing. They yeah. could use a. You know, you're a program like ECU. You got to yeah. you got to cut every corner you can, yeah. get every margin, and then find guys in the corners. And my understanding of what happened there was, a Mac plays third base. They have a local kid who plays third base. Who they were like he's going to start mm -hmm. now you got to work that out and say you're the dh or you play left field or yeah, you play yeah, first yeah. base you can't let talented a max all acc mm -hmm. <laughs> you're you're ecu you can't let an all acc player walk out the door no. over you know hey who's starting who's not and you got to find room for all those things but no state right down to things that i was right about State avoids the chickens, South Carolina, in that second game because JMU helps them out. Mm -hmm. JMU had a big, big shouts to JMU fans. Uh, I only watched oh, they on ride. TV. No, they ride. I only watched on well, TV, but they took that place over so yesterday. Said, neighbor, neighbor Rick and I were talking about this. I didn't really. I know you said the tickets were expensive. They were very expensive. That's why I so watched on TV. I'm at, I'm at the pool, and uh, Rick was thinking, yeah, man, I was thinking about, you know, checking out a game. And then I looked at the tickets. I'm like, well, how much were they? Because I saw Jillio said they were expensive. You know, everything is relative. You're kind of a cheap guy anyway. Um, look, man, I've learned so much from watching The Sopranos for the first time. It really informs me on how the Jillio household works in a lot of ways. It's always scheming. So he's, I'm like, well, how much were they going for? It's like 150 bucks. I'm like, excuse me? Yeah, for a baseball game. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they avoid the chickens. The heels. Not as fortunate. Again, and I told you that setup was, they got done dirty. Quick context. LSU con should not be in Chapel Hill. Quick context. They play, UNC and LSU play again, six o'clock yeah. at Boschimer. Um, Good crowd. Roy Williams in the house. He went viral over the weekend because there have been some big, big home runs. Okay. Big home runs. Oh, they had a walk off grand slam. Yes. Talk about college baseball. Yes. Big home runs this week. And Roy was there with his hat and everything. And he was living up, living life and things like that. But yeah. UNC and uh, LSU for the Super Regionals today at 6 o'clock. LSU got out. They got out early, and North Carolina just could not recover yesterday. We'll see what Tommy White does today. We'll see. The, pr the, other, we'll prince see. Who, the other prince who was promised? We'll see. He's already vanquished one big four rival in this tournament. Let's okay. see what he does tonight. Let's That'll be interesting. Happens. So what What do you mean they got done dirty? Just by playing LSU in this L thing? LSU should not be. First of all, LSU, okay. again. Arizona shouldn't be hosting. Yeah, I got you. It throws your whole thing off when I you just you. do the old you. like, oh, and you get to host, and you get to host. Like, no, it's a national tournament. Yeah, seed it accordingly. Yeah. Uh, and and teams like Carolina are the ones who end up ultimately being tested when they they've earned a better as the number four overall seed in this tournament. Mm -hmm. They do not deserve to be playing LSU in the opening rounds of this tournament. Um, th that's the way that I see it. But you look at this and it's like, well, who didn't get an SEC team? Duke was not with an SEC team. Duke's out. They fumbled the bag, yep. man. You can't be losing to UConn. Yep. I don't care who you are. You can't lose to UConn in baseball. They don't even get to practice for, for God's sake for six months of the year. Arizona covered. Uh, Oregon got a, got a breeze through there with Santa, uh, Santa Barbara, Oregon state also with a little bit of love and ECU is the other one that did not have an SEC, but obviously, uh, Wake Forest is no pushover. So, and by the way, while we're we're being political and all those things, we ECU are. and Wake need to play more. 
Oh, yeah. I need to see more ECU and Wake baseball. Mm -hmm. I need to see ECU and Wake play some football. Like, don't be letting these other schools off. All right. Oh, I see you, Duke. I'm going to schedule some wins and make a bowl game. I see you. I want to see you play the Pirates. I want to see you play the Mountaineers. Oh, man. Housekeeping. And Housekeeping is brought to you by Enovana. Check them out online. E-N-O-V-A-N-A dot com. Green Cleaning Solutions. They came to the house last, last week. week. Not they will this be week. here next week. Just want to I make, think I got it. Now. Just I think make, I got just, it. I just want to make that clear. If you have messy inside your mental passion yoga bana, give it green clean with Enovana. Yeah, check them out. Enovana dot com. we got the Sports Podcast Festival. That is August 24th, week zero, oh, the Rialto. I forgot about our calendars. What do you mean? It's June. Oh, yeah. We got to flip the calendars. I got so We have like so many calendars in here. We, have, we literally have three calendars. Let me go. Hold on a second. Vamp while I go grab the I calendar. Can't, I can't vamp. Yeah, because you can. You mine's, can talk. Mine's nailed to the wall. I can't even. Who we got next? Oh, Fishy. Getting married. He's on the calendar. That's right. He is getting married. Oh, look at that beagle. And, and uh, the coochie man there. My uh, my brother just got a new dog. He's on it. Yeah. That's uh, step one, right? Or step two, you get married. Dog step two. two step two. No, no. no uh, uh oh. The dog, they, they're, they're dog parents. Oh, okay. Man. Uh oh. What is June? Oh, this is going to put me right at my heels, dude. <laughs> oh, no. Like, it's I'm an orange. Getting, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> it's got to be orange. I'm getting emotional. Look at, oh, this. Look at this handsome where, fella. Where do they come up with these eye colors on this guy? Do you think right? it's a Photoshop deal? No, that's not a Photoshop. That's not AI generated. Okay. That's, that's real. That's some real cat. and flowers. <sighs> control of yourself man i miss roy i miss that damn cat manliest cat there was anyway uh all right i'll put this back up uh, what you were saying cat. is tickets on sale yes tickets tickets are on sale uh right now still available yeah my brother there's only a few seats available get them now that's radio mode i was doing my radio that's good that's good that was pretty impressive yeah my dad is like oh you have to show me how to buy tickets what do you mean i have to show you how to what? buy tickets of all the things he knows how to do right it's like go to the rialto website the rialto.com and it's it'll you'll find the link you can buy tickets that way so there you go so yeah we we're we're almost there almost almost i there. mean you almost gotta there. act quick though yeah before they're gone <laughs> get them now Get them now. Get them now. Well, good seats are available. So yeah, go to the. I think it was sixty two dollars or sixty three dollars. Yeah, it comes out with all the fees and everything else. Comes out to about sixty bucks. Uh, it's a value. You're gonna get three shows. You're gonna get us, yeah. Hand in the Dirt, and the Big Show, the Shutdown Full Cast, and your access to exclusive merchandise. Merch. Woo! Home Fields on board. We're happy about that. Big thanks to Breeze Through for being the presenting sponsor. Home Fields got an exclusive hoodie that you can only buy at the podcast festival. And we're going to have hats, dad hats and trucker hats, all kinds of hats. So we're very excited about this. So again, go to the Rialto website. Also, another programming note next Thursday, not this Thursday, but next Thursday, which is the so opening bad. round. I know, geez, the <laughs> opening round of the, the name of, it. of this big golf tournament that's taking place in Pinehurst. We're going to be at Longleaf, the US OG Open. Yeah, we're going to be at Longleaf watching golf. You can watch Joe in real time oh, with sweat. the DraftKings app sweat. open, <laughs> sweating his ass off <laughs> about such things. So be ready for that. Be ready for that. Uh, big thanks to Matt Davis over at State Farm for sponsoring Ovias and Gilio. Check him out online at insuregarner.com. Call him directly at 919-779-8277, or you can go to the OGinsurance.com. Save money on your home and auto. I've been a State Farm customer for a very, very long time. I have not had any other, I don't think I've ever had any other insurance because I don't need to get any other insurance. No, he's got you. Because they do an excellent job. So contact Matt Davis today, 919-779-8277. Also, big thanks to Roback. I got the Roback shorts on right now. I got the blue. gilio has got the uh, hoodie on right now with the little golf flags and everything else, which is very, very cool. This is the green tees. Green, Green tees. tees. Okay, yes. I like that. Yeah. Go to roback.com, R-H-O back.com. Use that promo code OG20, and you can be a stay-ready all-star like this guy. It happened. At the <laughs> uh, at the Canadian Open. Uh, apparently, CT Pan's caddy, Mike Fluff Cowan, was injured after a fall. A fan from the gallery volunteered to carry the bag while Cowan received medical treatment. Now, I'm looking at this guy... <laughs> 
Here's yeah. the here's the clip from ESPN. Now he is he should be wearing Roback. I'm looking at his outfit. He is not quite a stay ready all star, but he was ready. While he didn't have a polo, he had a, he looks like he's got some sort of master's shirt. And while he looks like he's not wearing spikes, that's okay. He was ready, Joe. He was Next. ready. He was ready in spirit. Next time, though, he needs to be. Yes. Get that rollback swag going. Absolutely. Next time you find yourself in that situation, you need to do this. Joining us on the Easter Automotive Group hotline, not a one time, but a two time Cooper's Hill cheese rolling champ. It's Abby Lampy. She's joining us once again, two years after winning the, the, the first time she participated in it. Abby, I got to ask you look, you do it once, you survive, you walk away, no injuries. Why the hell are you doing it again? People would come up to me like recently and they're like, oh my gosh, you're the cheese rolling girl. And I'm like, yeah, I won it two years ago. Like, boring like it's kind of outdated so i needed to like win it again i can't just cling on to something i won two years ago so i needed to redo it do you feel like you you've kind of been a trailblazer because i've watched enough clips of this over the years where people are trying to run down it you're like a rag doll you you yeah. just it's like throwing a toy down the stairs and somehow you survive honestly i feel like my strategy is like the best strategy because you're going to move forward regardless of like how you fall. So I'm going to be interested in how this strategy gets utilized over the next few years. Are you surprised that nobody's copied you yet? Kind of. Yeah. It's like the first thing I think of, like just hurl yourself down the hill, just roll. <laughs> so no training whatsoever. Uh, not this year. Two years ago, I trained at like Dorothea Dix by rolling down some hills. And then I watched literally hours of film of this. What is the record? Because the there's only one women's race, correct? Yeah. yeah. So Flo Early has the four-time cheese rolling championship. Okay. So I'm only two away. And I'm in my prime cheese rolling years. <laughs> Are you telling me that at 45, I'm not in my prime cheese rolling years? Is that what you're telling me? Um, I mean, you could break something. More easily than me. Yeah. Look, I, I run two miles and my left knee starts to hurt. So I can imagine that I'm not going to come out of this unscathed if I try to do it now. <laughs> yeah. I ran six miles um, on Saturday. So. Oh, yeah. You know, no big deal. No big deal. So you're going for the record. Is, is that what I'm hearing right now? Uh, we'll see. Like if my schedule allows it next year, I'm totally down to go again. Um, and then I probably will be going two years from now because it's evidently the 200 year anniversary of it. But the comp competition is going to be probably fiercer for that. Cause people like those round. Numbers. Honestly, I want the competition. I'm welcoming the competition. It was too easy this year. <laughs> <laughs> I want my landslide. Aha. Aha. I, I see what you did there. Landslide. All right. Here's the thing. So for people associated with NC state, Hearing it was too easy isn't really something that NC State people, NC State fans are not accustomed to. As Philip Rivers once said, Wolfpack ain't for soft people. You you epitomize that, literally hurling down a hill and, and surviving this thing. Not a lot of people can do this. Um, are you familiar? So you're younger. So are you familiar with the concept of NC State shit? A little bit, yeah. I, I hear about the NC State curse, you know, how mm. we keep losing things. Now, I have assigned NC State basketball coach Kevin Keats as the person who is credited with killing, removing, stopping NC State ship. But now watching you roll down that hill again, and I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. It's not just one you know, one fell swoop. It takes building blocks to finally overcome this this thing that has been bothering NC State fans for 40 years. Yeah. What if you were the one that started the process of killing off NC State shit two years ago? I mean, two years ago, we, we entered like a pretty dark time with um, the World Series. And then we, we got that win with the cheese rolling. And right. then some athletics did go uphill, but I do have to say, NC State athletics go up and down. You know, we have some really great sports out there. We have women's cross country with national championships. Um, 
I mean, my senior year of college, we rushed the field at the football game, like twice with Clemson and UNC. So that was probably like peak. Well, hold on a second though. Hold on a second though. Was when you when NC State beat Carolina and Clemson had you already before the- it was BC before the Chiefs. Oh, oh, it's f- before Chiefs, but you were there for it. I was there for it. You were yeah. there for the games. So look, you might be the link. I'm honored if I am. You might be the link. We might have to get Debbie Yao, former athletics director at NC State, to give you a Wolfpack Unlimited award for such a thing. Mm. Might might be a thing we have to consider. All right. Cheese party. I know that's on deck. Um, oh, yeah. When are you planning on doing this cheese party? July 20th. Okay. And um, is it just close family, friends, that sort of thing? Um, I've invited my close family and friends so far. Uh, we'll see. I mean, it is eight pounds of cheese. So that's yeah. a lot of cheese. My and I'm actually doing it in like a public space. So like if people show up, like who am I to stop them? You know, Wait, where, are you, where, are you, where are you doing this thing? Dorothea Dix. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hell, I might drop on by. That's eight eight pounds of cheese. Now, here's the thing. that That's the actual cheese you won, right? Yeah. yeah. What kind of cheese is it? Double Gloucester cheese. So that's a semi-hard cheese in the cheddar family. Mm-hmm. It's very pungent. Like, you will need to pair it with some jam, crackers, maybe an apple slice on top, like... Yeah, I was going to ask: Is there is there some sort of pepper jam? I'm a big fan of like a bake a sweet bacon jam that goes. I love a fig jam. Figs are so underrated, man. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that, and you have to have the right cracker too. I'm actually a big fan of the. Um, I, it sounds kind of bougie, but I like the Melba toast. Like, like not the fancy stuff that comes from the charcuterie joints. Just give me the box Melba toast. It goes well with everything. Okay. Okay. Just saying. And now, I was going to say with the semi-hard cheese, I was thinking ah, maybe you could grate it. You could top tacos with it. Maybe you could do some sort of grilled cheese, but that doesn't sound like something you could do with that cheese. I mean, maybe you could. I actually, someone DM'd me and it was like a cheese grater company. They're like, we make the cheese graters from Olive Garden. Send us your address and we'll send you a cheese grater. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you got cheese grater companies in your DMs? That's not something everybody can say now. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Bet I love Olive Garden, so I love cheese graters. Uh, I, I wouldn't even use it. I would just have it on display. People would ask, wait a minute, is that a cheese grater from Olive Garden? I'm like, why, yes, it is. Would you like some house Chianti as well? <laughs> yeah, Parmesan to top you off? Tell me <laughs> when to stop. <laughs> Nobody ever says when. Yeah. <laughs> Never. No. I mean, at least that's how my kids are. They just sit there and they want they want a pile of cheese yeah. on, their, uh, on their pasta for this. And the ribbons I, of cheese, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So the party's going to take place then. Uh, I might try, I might just have to drop on by and just kind of take all this in. Um, all right. So no, no injuries, no, no injuries, no, nothing whatsoever. No, no. I, okay. I do have a bruise, okay. but the bruise is like, I could have gotten it running into a like tear. Honestly, it's nothing too big. Has NC state reached out for any sort of uh, honoring you on the football field or bringing you out Not to this uh, year yet, but I mean, I'm hopeful. Um, T-shirts are going to drop sometime this week, so okay. I'll send you the link. All right. Yeah, no, send me a link for that. And then the other thing, too, have the Canes reached out to you about, you know, we, we're talking about cheese graters, right? Yeah. There's already that motion. We already have that motion for that Olive Garden cheese grater. Have the Carolina Hurricanes reached out about you cranking the siren? It's the same motion, practically. Yeah, not yet. You know, I did it two years ago, and that was surreal. Okay. Um, we'll see if we can bring it back. Going to have to bring you back for that one. Definitely have to bring you back for them. <laughs> Abby, I appreciate the time. Congratulations once again. That is an unbelievable thing. Doing it once is incredible enough. I would have retired after that, but you've got that hunger. You're ready for more. Let's get get to four. I'm excited about this. Maybe we can find it in the budget. We'll we'll do a live show from the Hill in a couple years. I'm excited. (laughs) You got to fly to England for that. Yeah. (laughs) All right, Abby. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Big thanks to Abby for uh, hanging out with us. Uh, I'm going to the cheese party, man. I'm very cheese party. I'm going to go to the cheese party. Big thanks to Hometown Realty. Check them out, myhtr.com. Again, that's myhtr.com. And you can buy and sell with confidence. Uh, there's a lot of new construction going up. In fact, I was um, I was actually driving around Cary. You want to talk about stuff that's going up like out of nowhere. Like yeah. all those old unincorporated parts of Cary. 
there's a lot of new developments that are going up. Everything that's old is new again. Yes, yeah, exactly it. And Hometown Realty can help you understand, you know, incentives, all the little things that go along with getting into some new construction. So head on over to myhtr.com. Again, that's myhtr.com. You buy that house, maybe you sold a house. You got to take it to closing. This is where corporate champion synergy comes into play, folks. You head on over to Whitaker and Hamer. Check them out online, wh.lawyer, attorneys and counselors at law. They do a lot more than just that. They've got locations across the triangle. They can represent you and handle your legal needs. So again, head on over to wh.lawyer. Again, that's wh.lawyer. So we got the NBA and NHL finals set on the NBA side of things. We've got Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. Uh, I appreciated the meme that you sent me where it was a clip from Star Wars. They're entering the cantina. Obi-Wan's telling Luke Skywalker, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to find a more wretched place of common villainy. A wretched eye. <laughs> so that's Luca or that's Kyrie talking to Luca as they're going to Boston for this thing. I, I'm not, I don't feel like spending too much time talking about the, the NBA finals, but the one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to have some sort of recontextualizing of Kyrie Irvin now that he's gotten to the NBA finals with the Dallas Mavericks as though somehow we owe Kyrie some sort of apology or we need to look at him. No, we don't. I think Kyrie is the one who probably figured it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? We ball. Okay. Right. It's just, but. Listen, the pandemic affected everyone in different ways. Uh -huh. and, it, and it obviously took a toll on him. And he doesn't really see it that way. But that's fine. A, a, a light switch went on for him in mm -hmm. terms of if I don't start playing at the level that I'm capable of playing at, I'm going to be out of the league and I'm going to be like, I'm going to be in a wretched hive uh -huh. talking about, you know, old ancient arts and, you know, hey man, everybody, religions. everybody runs their own race. Right. Okay. But, it is a credit to him. He's not owed an apology, but it is a credit to him for realizing mm -hmm. a how talented he really is and how important he can be. And this, you know, we like to talk a lot about legacy and obviously he's not in the conversation with LeBron and Michael Jordan, but he is, you know, you when, what we've seen with LeBron is when you do it with more than one team, it does add to who you are. It does add to your stature. Agreed. It does add to your legacy particularly when you're an important part of what that team is. Mm -hmm. Dallas is not here, as I mentioned in the previous series. The previous series was all about Kyrie, mm -hmm. the whole series. Luca's going to be Luca, okay? Yes. So someone has to support him. Ultimately, luca has been the one that's been entertaining to watch because he's talking massive amounts of shit. Yes. I mean, I mean massive. <laughs> It's, ed it's entertaining. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> and look, if you're rooting for him or betting on him, or there, there is that too. But the thing, the thing that I would say about Kyrie, um, it's the questions that I had for him going all the way back to what was going on in Brooklyn and everything else. If you want to play basketball, great. If you don't want to play right. basketball, that's fine. You can too. leave it and do whatever you want. It's pursue seek, what you want to pursue. What you want to do, like as everybody. Every, like I said, everybody kind of runs their own race. And as I've gotten older, I think Ricky Williams was the first one to get me to go, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Players do not necessarily engage with the sport that they're good at the same way that fans would. Sure. Some, some people understand I'm good at this, but that doesn't mean I love it. Ricky Williams was one of those kind of guys that made me recontextualize and understand and have a little bit more empathy for athletes and what they're going through and what their interests are and you know, more than an athlete and everything else. Ricky finally kind of decided, you know what, man, this ain't for me. I'm going to go pursue other interests. And I, man, salute, man, salute to Ricky Williams for going out there and finding what it is that's good for him. I kind of felt the same way about Kyrie there for a while. I'm like, dude, it sounds to me like you just don't want to be a part of this. And that's okay. That's fine. Go pursue it, man. Yeah. But now that he's actually refocused himself. Maybe without the problematic views on the Jewish religion. There, there, too. There's that, which is another reason why yeah. this whole like, oh, you know, we owe Kyrie We're, over and up. Uh, no, 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 we don't. We can call him out for the dumb bullshit <sighs> that he said. Okay. You you know the I feel like we do need a sounder for this. You do know the NC State shit tie. To Kyrie Irving, don't you? No, not I'm not um, since we were talking about NC State shit with Abby. Now I feel like I need a more history lesson I'm, on I'm the NC State shit tie. I'm gonna need some string and some. Oh, jeez. 
Are you ready for do, this? Do we need like, yeah, we need the always sunny you know, thing you, here. Are you ready please, for this? Give me, give me the Kyrie Irving connection to NC State shit. NC please. State shit and Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving was playing with LeBron James. Yes. They won an NBA title today together in Cleveland, yes. which as we say for LeBron, you count for three. I agree. Obviously, Kyrie scored, what, 80 points in the last two games of that series. Yeah. He was pretty good, yeah. including the game winning shot that people forget in game seven. Yeah. Okay. So that wasn't enough, though, for Kyrie, because then Kyrie decided, I want, I want my own. I want to show that I can do this on my own. Well, he arrived at that conclusion with a conversation after a conversation with the pastor to the stars. Oh, said pastor to the stars was friend is, is, was good friends with Kevin Durant mm -hmm. and Kevin Durant said, Hey, you got to talk to my guy. You're talking about Carl. Lentz. You got to talk to my guy. Yes. Former NC state walk on Carl Lentz sidebar who famously gave his Game worn oh, no. NC State shorts to Justin Bieber, I mean, Pac Pro. Car so Car Carl Lentz isn't famous for that. Carl I, I watched the documentary <laughs> on Hulu. It's quite fascinating. Carl Lentz, legit, is the one who had a come to Carl Lentz slash Jesus slash whatever being Kyrie believes in. Yeah. And said, Hey, man, if you want to do it on your own, you need to leave LeBron's shadow and go make it on your own. Literally, this happened. I'm not making this up. I know. So Pac Pro, NC State shit. <laughs> Carl Lentz breaks up Kyrie and LeBron. And that's actually how he ended up with the Celtics. And I then see. while he was with the Celtics, Kyrie decided, you know, this carrying the load thing and trying to teach younger people and be a mentor. I mean, it's kind of hard. I don't, I don't know how LeBron did it all this time. <laughs> I can't exactly do this. <laughs> and however many stops later, here we are. You but mean yes. NC State shit is how Kyrie Irving ended up away from LeBron and Cleveland. You mean we just can't re-rack Monday's podcast on Tuesday? <laughs> Wait, what? What? <laughs> Actual work is involved? <laughs> so the NBA, I think, has taken a backseat to what's been going on in the WNBA. Yeah, I agree. Caitlin Clark brings out all the takes, Woo! which I think ultimately is good. We talked about this with Lavelle Moten, <laughs> NC Central coach, last week, that all these things are ultimately good for the w WNBA. Even if Caitlin Clark is bringing out some of the worst conversations I have seen in sports in quite some time, doesn't matter because it's getting people to engage with the product, check out the product, and maybe even go, oh, damn, they play like this? Okay, I'm in. I saw this pointed out, and I agree with it, in that it's very similar to our conversations about ACC women's basketball, where if you miss the old days, well, the old days are happening today in women's ACC hoops. You know, players that have been around for a long time. There's rivalries that have been built up. There's actual stakes like you beat continuity. me. Continuity. You beat me last year. Well, we're getting a revenge game here. All sorts of stuff. There's elements of that in the WNBA when it comes to the physicality, the rivalries, the dislike that occurs between players. Okay. And all of this has now been center focused on Caitlin Clark, who over the weekend, Look, the Indiana Fever have been struggling. Caitlin Clark has been struggling. She's had some moments There's here and there. There's a reason the Indiana Fever had the top pick in the draft. They're terrible. They're not good. Absolutely terrible. But over the weekend, it all came to a head when she essentially got checked. Essentially what it was. Oh, she she got, got blindsided. Like, she, it was a she, dirty play. She got checked by uh, Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy. Uh, was it? Kennedy. Who is this that did this? Uh, uh, Kennedy Carter. And she ends up getting, uh, she ends up basically, she gets yelled at and then she gets shouldered and she gets knocked on the floor. And then after the game, Carter didn't want to talk about it. Like, if you're asking me questions about Caitlin Clark, we ain't talking about this kind of stuff. And this has led to all sorts of crazy conversations about she's being targeted. There's pettiness. There's all this other stuff kind of going on. And WNBA fans who have been watching for a long time are trying to tell you, no, 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 no. This is what kind of happens to rookies all the time. It's a physical game. Just because Caitlin Clark is the one who's the focus of this now doesn't mean we have to stop it or it's unfair. Sure. It's a larger there, problem. There's a difference, though, between being physical and being cheap. This was a Agreed. cheap shot. Agreed. And Carter gave it away by saying either yo, you bitch or yo, bitch or yeah. you bitch yeah. as she you know, comes up and then elbows her in the kidneys mm -hmm. from behind. Mm -hmm. Like That's not being physical. That's being cheap. That's trying to injure somebody. There's no place for that in the game. Mm -hmm. 
That's that's not I'm going to box you out and we're tussled up. That's not you're going to the basket and I'm going to hit you hard totally to make that. you think again about driving to the basket. That's basketball. This this is total and complete bullshit. And then to be a coward and not answer the question. Yeah. Hey, stand down your business. That's if you don't part. like her, if you're petty and say, hey, I don't like her. She made that's one. The part. She made one comment that I'll get behind. She says she's just a three point shooter. Maybe she is. Maybe she is. Then say that. Right. That's the part I had the problem with. It wasn't the physical aspect of it. Not the, like you said, stand on that business. If you feel that strongly about Clayton Clark that you're going to yell that at her, all the cameras are on it, you know you're going to become a viral sensation. You're going to even, what did she tweet out? I think it ended up getting uh, deleted. Troll notifications blowing up. I love it with the kissy face emotion. No, Good. you don't. Actually, you don't love <laughs> well, it no, because you if you really you were don't about want any it, part of it, you would have. Put you would have gone right to like where's the microphone? Where's the microphone? Yeah, I don't like her. I, I think she's overrated. I'm, I think she's just a three point shooter. I think she's not that good, and she's learning the hard way that this league is a lot tougher than all y'all thought it was going to be. Stand on that business. That's the part that I had the problem with it. Say it with your chest if you really believe it, rather than just doing the action itself. But that's where that's what Caitlin Clark has brought out. Ultimately, I think this is good as it kind of like draws attention to the league. I think there's a respect level for the league. But I also think, too, as we get away from Caitlin Clark specifically, you brought up, I think, the buried lead here. What's up with the fever? Yeah. What the, honestly, what's up? No. With, I know they were bad. That's why they have the first pick in the draft. But there's something else going on here. Nobody. Where were her teammates? You. you where where was this, her coach? You said where me, was her coach? You sent me this clip from Matt Barnes on the All the Smoke podcast. It was from Instagram. And I, honestly, he pretty much nails it. Now, Caitlin Clark says she got cheap shotted against the sky. I mean, throughout the season, she's been getting beat up. Hard screens, elbows, knocked down. It is what it is. She's not the first. She won't be the last. My issue and my question is, where the fuck are her teammates at? Where are y'all at? Where are the rest of the Indiana Fever at? I've seen a couple girls smirk when she's got knocked down, half-assed to pick her up. Like, y'all supposed to protect the asset, protect the star. And all this is the team. She's the star. You always protect your star. I was someone who protected the stars. You fuck with Kobe. CP, Blake, list goes on. I'm a, it, it's going to be a problem because you guys are supposed to be a family. And you wonder why you sit at the bottom of the league right now is because y'all don't protect each other, man. Coach don't do shit about it. Players don't shoot, do shit about it. Y'all should be ashamed of it. But the rest of the league is going to continue to test her. And that's what they're supposed to do. It's your guys' fucking job to have her back and have each other's back. Got to do better, ladies. So there you go. There's uh, there's Matt Barnes, all the smoke. I agree completely with him in the, on that regard. Yeah. It, it, listen, you can hate your coach. You can love your coach. Yeah. There's different ways to go about your coach. Yeah. And you can still win. You, you have to respect your teammates. You have to have a love for your teammates. And obviously, I told you, when her, her college season is long, and then they jump right into this, and it's hard to build any kind of chemistry. There's obviously a lot of jealousy involved here. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. You know, she's white. She's straight. There's a lot of different things here with her that, are, mean, that, that the league... Has, no. can have some issues with. I look, I'm just I, saying I am not going to dismiss some of the layers that you bring up. I'm not yeah. I'm not going to it's dismiss part them. of it. It's not all of it. Right. It's part of it. I uh, it would be naive of me yes. to dismiss some of those layers. Okay. But sometimes I think we get a little too complicated. We get a little too deep on this stuff. Sometimes it ain't that deep. Sure. All right. But this was, it, this was somebody who was positioned as the, as we talked about this with uh, with Lavelle Mountain last week, the Larry Bird of the WNBA. And she's going to draw attention. She's going to draw range. She's going to elevate everybody up. That doesn't mean everybody's on board. And some people are looking at this. I'm like, oh, okay. America's sweetheart. We're going to get we'll, her we'll checked. Her. We're going to show well, her. And that's the, the flip side of this now is it's incumbent upon her to improve. Yes. Like you want to be Steph Curry. Well, guess what? Steph Curry changed basketball. Mm -hmm. wasn't not just because he was a three point shooter. He was able to help his team win games. Now she needs to adjust and not just be a three point shooter. That's that's her challenge. Let's take a break. Let's take a hockey break. Brought to you by Happy and Hill. I feel like I need to do a pre Disney detox. Oh no! So I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna do some happy inhale. I'm gonna get smoothies. I'm gonna get the the, the clean eating. almond brothers. Almond brothers cream smoothie. Um, almond brothers. Big fan of the ahi poke bowl. 
Yeah. Hey, the Pokemon. Hey, I'm going to do the I Hate Poke Bowl, which is really, really good because I know by the time I get to Florida, all bets are off. So I need to like just get myself in the right space before I end up turning it around. <laughs> you know what I did last week? What did you do last week? I got the Bueno Bowl, mm -hmm. but I got steak instead of chicken. Oh, okay. OMG. Yeah, the steak's legit, man. OMG. I'm a chicken guy in the in the grand scheme of things, but yeah, the steak's no joke. It was very good. So head on over to Happy and Hale. They got locations across the triangle. North Hills is our home base. There's one off of six four. You got Durham mm -hmm. as well. And download the app. Yes. Get yourself the app. Do it. Order online. It's always ready. You go in, get yourself a lacrony, as Jackson likes to say. Out of the out of the box there. Good stuff. <laughs> so the NHL Stanley Cup finals are set. You got uh, Paul Maurice. Happy for him. Uh, former Canes coach. The Canes Cup goes the way of Paul Maurice. And we got the Edmonton Oilers on the other side. Uh, as I was doing my morning reading, I actually took issue with... I don't subscribe to The Athletic anymore, but for some reason, I still get their email newsletter. Okay. Um, which is fine. Whatever. They're just trying to promote the stuff that they've got. And I'm like, oh, okay. Let me see what they had to say about this. And um, this is the part that I had a problem with. And we're going to see this leading up to the NHL finals or to the actual Seneca finals themselves. There is an elephant in this room, though. The Edmonton, Florida matchup will have a hard time reaching the general public. I asked oh, no. Andrew Marshand, our senior sports media columnist, for his thoughts from a ratings perspective. Remember, Andrew is from New York, by the way. That's where he got his, uh, his start, his background. Quote, it's not what you want if you're the NHL. With dreams of New York or Dallas, instead you have Edmonton and Florida. One silver lining, Connor McDavid. No, 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 no. Not one. That is the silver lining. Not what you want if you're the NHL. It absolutely freaking is, guys. Connor McDavid has been positioned as the next one. Okay? We're almost on a decade of this when right. it comes to Connor McDavid. And I'm right. not trying to dismiss Connor McDavid because if you saw the goal last night from Connor McDavid, you absolutely know Disgusting. he is. Legit. It was gross what he did. Gross. Yes. <laughs> it makes me go, why can't the Canes do that? Why can't we have one why of those? Why can't we as have Rod one of those like, Well, they got two of them. <laughs> they do have two of them. And that's the point. Okay? Yeah. I don't feel sorry for Mark Messier that we don't get the Mark Messier Bowl. I feel good for the NHL because they have one of their stars, one of their marketable stars, in the biggest moment. That's why you watch. Not because of some stupid market. Not because of New York. Because one other quick lesson here. And I am I hope ESPN learns this lesson. I know I'm being naive when I say this. But I really do hope they learn this lesson. People do not love New York the way you think they like New York. There was almost, because of the way it was covered, tears of joy for the Rangers getting beat by the Florida Panthers. Because it was fine. Oh, you mean St. Igor bled? What? You mean that all these Hall of Famers couldn't get it? Th the President's Trophy curse kicked, kicks in? People do not love the Rangers the way you make it out like people like the Rangers. There's a world beyond New York, folks. Not even the people in the tri-state area like the Rangers right. the way that you think they like the Rangers. Right. That it's is not a cute story. Such a 19, it's not even a 1978 or 84 mentality because hockey wasn't a big national no. sport then either. No. no. So it's just a fallacy to think that rate market equals ratings. McDavid nothing, is the story. But nothing equals ratings. Hockey is a niche sport mm -hmm. that is big in its niches. But okay? I would push back in that ratings for the NHL have actually been pretty good. They've right. seen but an relative. Trend. It's, all, no, it's all relative. It's all relative. I get that. But yeah, yeah. If you're looking at this, can the NHL match like, oh my God. the NFL? Game seven of the Stanley Cup Finals, right? Was outrated by the pinstripe bowl. Yeah, no shit, dude. Most everything. Nobody does. cares. Yes, yes. Right, like yeah. it's not about ratings wise. I'm saying nobody cares. Yeah, you care about yours. Like even us in this area, mm -hmm. we obviously care about the Hurricanes. Like how many people do you think are still locked into the playoffs? Not many. Very few. Not many. Very few. Not many. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, speaking of the Carolina Hurricanes. Marty Natchez is the bell of the ball so far this offseason. Okay. Uh, if you, depending on which uh, insider you want to look at, um, there's all sorts of teams that are interested in Marty Natchez. Although, which I could see, this ends up, remember when I said, I wish we had one of those, right? When it comes to Connor McDavid. Yeah. This has brought up as the Florida Panthers are getting to the Stanley Cup finals again. And Matthew Kachuk has been a key piece of them getting to the Stanley again. Cup finals again. Oh, and the Russian goalie. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. There is uh, a revisiting. I actually saw Pierre Lebrun doing this. 
um, where it was brought up again because it, it highlighted a what could have been from last year and that were two off seasons removed from the Carolina Hurricanes being in the mix with Matthew Kachuk with Marty Natchez as part of a trade package. And it made me think, oh man, what could have been if they actually ended up trading Marty Natchez for Matthew Kachuk and, and all that kind of stuff. But that's the here nor there. But it does highlight that regardless of what you think of Marty Natchez and his time with the Carolina Hurricanes, he is a sought after asset as a restricted yeah, free agent. That's actually a good thing for the Hurricanes. As a good thing. That is a good thing. And you know, I, it's one of those things where um, it's a sh it's it's unfortunate that it didn't necessarily work out here um, when it when it's all said and done. But if the Canes can flip this like they almost did two years ago to get a you know something that's a, a better asset, or it, maybe you you use Marty to flip it for goaltending, right? I mean, all all sorts of stuff that can uh, that can be in play right now. But Natchez continues to be the focal point of the Canes offseason and general interest in terms of a trade. Haven't really heard much on the front of Seth Jarvis. I would wish they would just get that freaking done already because you do it now, it'll end up saving you money in the long run. That's a tale as old as time when it comes to these contract negotiations. Uh, Brett Pesci obviously is in the in the mix and what's going to happen in the future. Jalen Chatfield, all that kind of stuff. But right now, all focus seems to be on Marty Natchez. Be curious to see how it all ends up. But I don't see him in a Canes uniform next year. Yeah, we got a month. <laughs> we got time. <laughs> it's what I would tell you. We got, we got time especially on the UFA front. But yeah, you're right. Marty being an RFA makes more sense to get that figured out before. And then, you know, your cap space, like I, like I tell you, cap space is an asset as well. Big thanks to Breeze Through for sponsoring Ovias and Gilio. Check them out across the triangle. Uh, PNC location is kind of like our home base. Download the app so you can save money on gas. And of course, we thank Breeze Through for sponsoring the podcast festival. Get your tickets today before they all run out. Shouts to Adam for playing. Not only is he playing the pro am, we played with Wes Moore. Yeah. And I saw Wes Moore Friday mm -hmm. and he was walking around. I said, Oh, coach, congratulations. He's like, Thanks. I said, What do you got coming back? How are you feeling? He's like, Well, I go, You got those guards back, right? He's like, Yep. I said, They're good. He's like, yeah, how many bigs though? Need some bigs. I, I said, okay, okay, okay. I, said, okay. I like those guards now, coach. I know, I know. <laughs> Wes is good stuff. Did man. you talk to him about Dak, Dak Prescott though? Yeah, you, know, you know, I I didn't want to bring bring up anything other need than to, about we, the Cowboys or bring him down. You know what I mean? Like he was feeling good. We need to get Wes in the studio to do a complete well, Dallas Cowboys. Therapy. Yeah, yeah. Complete, I, I mean, we're good yeah. at that. So go to breezethrough.com, download the app, save money on gas. I had a bonus. I was cleaning out the freezer. Okay. And I was like, what's this? Don't know where this is going. What is? Oh, I forgot that I bought so many steak tips that I froze Ooh. steak tips. So Signature I steak tips. thawed those bad boys out and threw them on Slop the grill, the grill. Last night. And they were fantastic. Mm -hmm. as, uh, as, as my older son, Caleb said, yeah, man, you can never go wrong with signature steak tips. Nope. You can't screw these up. You really can't. They're fantastic. So go to thebutchersmarkets.com. Check them out across the triangle. They got two locations in Wilmington, by the way. So don't sleep on the Wilmington locations. I know we got people all, all across North Carolina who listen. So you can go grill uh, while you're chilling at the beach this summer. So go to thebutchersmarkets.com. <music> Head on over to the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Use the promo code OG24, folks. You bet $5 and you will get $200 in bonus bets right now. I mentioned that I was at the pool and I overheard. You okay, Joe? I, I'm sitting here racking my brain trying to get a pick for you. But then I'm like, we're recording and we're doing some other things. Yeah. I, I'm going to give it away anyway. Yeah. It, because it's just too good not to. Okay. Maybe, maybe I can just like send out the, br the brain waves to people. Perhaps. If they're listening in the audio version, they'll get it. Well, I wasn't trying to do brain waves. I was telling my neighbor directly, no, 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 no. You need to draft, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Oh, yeah. And then use the promo code OG24. He looks at me. Zach looks at me. He's like, um, like look, man, you bet $5 and you're going to get $200 in bonus bets. You're like, oh, I see. I'm, I'm also so he not, jumped right on it. Yeah, I'm also not going to lie to you. It's the best interface. It's the easiest one yeah. to use. 
uh, you have the boosts, you have the different options, the different promotions. Same but game parlays. All u- that fun ultimately, stuff. it is the most reliable and trustworthy app. Trust me when I tell you this. <laughs> Joe of all people would know. <laughs> I, I know this. Joe would okay. know. And this, they, yes, they are paying me to say that, but I am telling you this from experience. Okay. <laughs> so, new customers, download that DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the promo code OG24. Bet $5, get $200 in bonus bets only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 100 and, 100 and, 168 hours after issuance. Man, I've been so good on the call to action. You have. Yeah. Man, I screwed it up. It's a Monday, man. I got a case of the Monday. <laughs> Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms that sportsbook.draftkings.com <laughs> slash basketball terms. They are the official betting partner of the NBA. All right, if you're on the audio version, if you like free money, the total in the ECU Evansville game is 13 and a half. Okay. The, there, there are no... By the, I mean, like James is going to be pitching for ECU today. Yeah. They're out of pitchers. Evansville had won and shoved on them on Friday. But guys, just do it. The, Take the over in Guys. all of these in all of these last games. Like you are seriously talking about like your fifth, <laughs> sixth, seventh, and eighth guys going out there on the mound. So give me the over 13 and a half. Man, that's starchy as hell, but give me the over. Love it. Absolutely love it. So we were at the UNC health open at Raleigh Country Club last week. Uh, we were at the Pro-Am. Uh, it was good to catch up with Roy Williams. If you missed that conversation, go check it out uh, on our previous episode. That would be episode 201. We are on episode 202. So go check out 201 with our conversation with Roy. Um, it's picked up some steam on Instagram on the reels. And it's so funny to me to he- see some NC State fans like, oh, Roy, the cheater, whatever. If Roy Williams walked Please. into the room with you, all that... Cheater, cheater, cheater. You'd be like, hey, Roy, can I get a picture? Roy, that would absolutely happen. Roy is the David Ortiz to NC State's Derek Cheater. Like, yeah, those fan bases, you, you just as Yankee fans respect David Ortiz yeah. for, for making, you know, because he owned them forever. Yes. Like, and if Mariano Rivera were to be in Boston, you don't, you'd have no choice but to be like, okay, yeah, I respect you. Respect I don't like you, but, but I respect you. That's what, <laughs> that's what it's all about. So after we got done talking to Roy, we caught up with UNC golfer or former UNC golfer, Ryan Gerard. Um, so it's already played. And at the end of the conversation, we're like, Hey man, go hit him straight. I guess no, he, he was he okay. How do here, you do? This here's weekend? the thing. Here's the thing about golf, man. Ryan Gerard's. And I tried to tell you that this tour is really, really competitive. It is right. Okay. First of all, um, uh, congrats to our friends at McConnell golf because, and, and belatedly to, uh, Donald Ross, because the course, the course was the big winner this weekend. The, the final, like last year, remember I told you, man, it's going to be 20 something. It's going to be whatever the eight under was the winning score Mm -hmm. and and the course played really difficult. So that's number one. Ryan Gerard's in a position in his life and actually had this conversation with my son Jackson yesterday. He shot a set par 70. He shot a 72 and a 71 and did not make the cut. Can you imagine shooting a 72 and a 71 and being disappointed? Yeah. Can you imagine getting to a point in your life where you shoot on a Donald Ross course, a 72 (laughs) and a 71 and you're like, Man, could have done better. So yes, he he did play well, but the the tour itself is is ultra competitive. And uh, again, congrats to the McConnell golf people because I d- I really do think they were the big winners this week. So we started the conversation referencing Roy Williams, who is old school. He calls NC State North Carolina State. North Carolina State. He won't do the wolf <laughs> sign. We no, know we understand no. that. Come on, but Ryan's a young guy, so his dynamic with State is yep. a little bit different, and that's how the conversation started. And I'm guessing you're cool with us because we're a couple of state guys. I graduated in 01. Julia, what, you were 96, right? 97. 97? Jeez. You're <laughs> two 20. years before Ryan was born. <laughs> you're, you're, you're 22. You're 22. For Roy, the, the spiciness travels. You, you don't care about us. I mean, it's a couple old state grads. I mean, you guys are all right. Um, <laughs> Now Duke, I, you'd have my, a problem. My my disdain is with the Duke fans <laughs> and the, the Dukey bombs. So uh, you guys are all right. <laughs> okay, even after the ACC uh, tournament, you know, there's there's a couple things that you know you just 
you just got to let go in life and that's one of them so um it's it was a tough watch and you yeah. know congrats it's it's good seeing you guys get one every now and again <laughs> 40 but, years yeah so, well it's <laughs> funny my wife my wife graduated from carolina in 2000 and when state won the acc championship and got to the final four she's like i don't get all my friends who are all like i can't believe state stuff like let them have it like this is it's been you know 30 some odd years just let them have it yeah, it is yeah it there's is. a there's a bunch of old state fans that that deserve to see one go through the hoop. So I'm I'm glad for them. <laughs> I know we'll be back kicking their butt for the next 20 25 years. So, <laughs> so Roy, as Gilio mentioned when we when we talked to Roy earlier, um, he gave a lot of money uh, yes. to the school in Absolutely. in COVID uh, because I mean the lights had to stay on somehow some way and. You, you benefited. And the NCAA messed up, and yes. Roy corrected their mistake. They corrected basically. this mistake, and you benefited from this. So, what is that, you know, as much as he loves to golf and obviously his love of school and what that means to you? I mean, Co- Coach is just a phenomenal person. Anyone that spends any time with him, I mean, you can tell he's, he's one of the nicest, most kind, just genuine people that uh, I've met, that I've been fortunate enough to spend time with. So, um, for him doing that, to, to the school and for what it meant to my career, the golf team, other other teams, other players in the athletic department. It's it's just really, really special. And um, obviously he's done so much for the university and so much for just making UNC what it is over the last 25, 30 years that um, it, it's, it's unbelievable that he would go above and beyond, but that's just the kind of person he is. Um, he's the kind of guy that it's, there's nothing that someone could say that's nice about him that I wouldn't believe. There's there's no one that he's met that he doesn't remember, and mm-hmm. he always does everything with a smile on his face and the kindness of his heart. So just seeing him kind of do that stuff is is beyond impressive. But I mean, that's just the kind of guy he is, and we're forever thankful for him. And it's it's cool just to know him. What did what did he say to you on the 18th green before you made that birdie putt? Um, he told me that no pro that he plays with never misses a putt on 18 for birdie, and to not let him down. Okay. <laughs> and I told him that's definitely not any pressure, <laughs> but it did go in. So thankfully, uh, I kept his streak he alive. He coached you up. Yeah, he coached me up. He gave me some words of encouragement. Gilio um, likes to think that he coached Roy up earlier. Today. I did. I did. Oh, That's like, sure. I told him, pretend you're at PNC. Yes. You never lose there. <laughs> no. And he striped it right down the middle on 10 with you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you just got to get him riled up about the state <laughs> state guys. He'll, he'll get it. There's nothing he can't put his mind to yeah. if, if he's a little angry about NC State. You, what do you think of this track, and what do you think of the chance to play here? I don't know what your background is in terms of playing on Ross courses, but you know, I know it's hard. This is not an easy tour that you're on, and I don't think people – quite understand that uh you were someone who was ultra successful in college but guess what everyone else on this tour was ultra successful in college so just just talk a little bit about your chance to play on a ross course maybe your background on a ross course but also just the chance to come back here and maybe be a little bit more at home and a little more ease maybe not in knoxville on a on a tuesday you know what i mean (laughs) yeah this is a a really cool spot um i'm from raleigh this is my hometown hometown event and went to UNC just down the road. So it's it's kind of almost like a double homecoming for me. And um, I've played this course once or twice before. Uh, it's a really, really good golf course. It's very old school. They kind of almost restored it back to its original design three or four years ago. And it's grown in really nicely. And the greens are no joke. The bunkers are no joke. I mean, Donald Ross does a really good job of just kind of That deceiving. guy knew what he was doing. Yeah, just a little <laughs> bit. I think he knew what he was <laughs> yeah. doing. But just really forcing you to hit quality shots every single swing on the golf course means something you can't really fall asleep at the wheel at all and um, when you're out there there's a lot of just strategy that goes into it that you might not have on some other golf courses you got to really think through things and make sure that you're leaving yourself in a good spot as opposed to just kind of going up there and finding it and whacking it again i'm jealous man i'm jealous i love to play you know have that kind of to be here, you know, because like I said, you're in Knoxville last week, you're in Idaho one of these months, you know, it's just hard to be away and, and you're, you're on your own. And most people don't realize like, yeah, you have a Titleist hat and a Berkeley Capital Advisors. So I'll throw them a little bit of a shout, but you got to pay for every, that. you got to pay for everything. Like, people don't understand that. Yeah. And it's, um, it's a grind. I mean, we're playing 14 of the next 15 weeks and it's a seven day job mm-hmm. that you're doing 
four days in a tournament, Thursday through Sunday, but then Monday's a travel day, Tuesday's practice, Wednesday's pro-am. So you're not really getting a day to really kick your feet up. Um, or even eat pizza. Yeah, I don't eat pizza, hopefully. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, it can be a grind, but I think the thing is I, I love it. I wouldn't be doing anything else, and I think the majority of guys out here really love it. Now you, you happen to be good enough at it to make money with it. Mm -hmm. And um, it is an investment because when you do get to the PGA Tour, I was fortunate enough to be there last year, you really do cash in. I mean, it is beyond worth it. But um, no, it, it's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to weed out guys. The Corn Ferry Tour does a really good job of preparing you for the next level and for success at the next level. And you got to go out there and earn it out here in order to get back up there. And um, when, you, when the guys do get through here, the majority of the time they find success at the next level. And I think that's just a testament to how deep the game is and but how how important and how hard it is to kind of get there. And the struggle that you go through prepares you for that next that next step. There's something to be said about earning it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like um, seeing being out here, the grind that you go through today has to be kind of like a an easier day so to speak well he's like, got his shorts on so it's yeah at least like, one of those like, days like i see worst. like <laughs> i see this i mean i get i get what the programs are about it's you know it's making sure that the sponsors are happy and there's people that are uh linking up with you and obviously an opportunity to, to, to golf with roy williams but i also saw a, a remote controlled <laughs> hand cart today Joe's Joe's not a golf person. I'm but not he is, a golf. He is yeah. a technology person, as you can tell. Be wearing cool, a Hawaiian <laughs> a Hawaiian shirt, you know, and and whatnot. I don't have anything golf attire on me, but I saw that that remote control cart, and I thought to myself, if you're doing this professionally, you got it. Do you hate that? Do you think that's ridiculous? You're like, come on. Now. He's finally that's got someone to carry cool. his back you for. You care? Yeah. Somebody's carrying it, but like, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice for the caddy to be able to have one of those things? I mean, I. I would rather my caddy carry my bag because that's what I pay him for. Uh, that's fair. But, uh, that's fair. Uh, no, nah, you got to. Hey, he's not coming for the caddies. Is that you what you're gotta, telling yeah, me? Yeah, you got to give the caddies a little bit of a hard time, <laughs> kind of break them in, make sure they know they know that they they're there to help you out. But no, I mean the the technology's cool. Uh, golf has come a long way in the last, I want to say. 15, 20 years. I was going to say five years, man. But realistically, <laughs> it's it's even more recent than that. In the yeah. last five years, it's it's really cool to see it kind of become more mainstream, see some of my friends that had never touched a golf club five years ago to be obsessed with it now. And um, just to see the game kind of growing just in popularity, but also the off the course stuff, the top golfs, the drive shacks, yeah. the the putt putt courses that they're opening up. Like um, it's it's becoming more of a social and relaxed event and an atmosphere where you don't feel super stuffy or super out of place. So I like seeing that because it makes it more accessible for a lot of people. Yeah, top golf is more my speed uh, or whatever that video game arena that Tiger Woods was trying to build. But I got I don't yeah. think, I think it got. Uh, beat up in a storm or something back. like that yeah, be yeah. Back. but it'll be back that that's that's more my speed uh ryan appreciate you hanging out man best of luck this yeah week. good luck this week thanks, thanks so straight, much, man. guys i appreciate it y'all have a good one big thanks to mosquito authority for sponsoring ogas and Gilio, a corporate champion from the jump I see Mosquito Authority, Pest Authority signs across my neighborhood i'm going to take credit for every single one of them and as i was chilling on the patio i was fine I was, uh, what was it, Friday night, hanging out on the back patio, no big plans, just sipping on some seltzers, which, I'll get, to, which I'll get to in a second, but was not bothered by mosquitoes. That's the, it was gorgeous this weekend. All better, thanks to Mosquito Authority. Hayes is such an OG, man. You ready for this? Yeah. Chung Yeezy had his 50th birthday. Hayes and Chung are our good friends. Chung's not that old. Stop it. 50. Jeez. So I text, Hayes and I have been texting about uh, swarmers. They're not termites. They kind of look like termites, but they're swarmers. Yeah. So we've been texting and I said, hey, uh, he's like, yeah, let's catch up. We'll catch up. I said, I'll see you Saturday. Chung's birthday. Mm -hmm. He goes, uh, we'll see what, what happens with baseball. And I go, <laughs> <laughs> Hayes, sir, come on, man. It's a birthday. Sir, come on. Come on now. <laughs> it's one of those round numbers. I'm not a big believer in celebrating only round numbers, but come on. No, man. 43. No, 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 no. Come on, man. 50. 50. It's kind of, kind of a big deal. So. I did not see Hayes on Saturday, but All right, fair enough. Happy birthday to Chung Easy. I did see Matt uh, and his crew, so that was awesome. Uh, from com coming in from San Diego, uh, and happy birthday to Chung, man. Uh, I, I already told him. I go. I bought him a card, and I go. I'm not. I'm not giving you a gift. 
You already got your gift, man. Final four, ace yeah, man, you're good. Chip. What do you want? You're good. <laughs> you didn't lose any money gambling on NC State. <laughs> Come on, that's man. a win, man. I got nothing for you. There's nothing an, I can do to help you. That is an absolute win. I mentioned I was sipping on something. It's all thanks to nature's relief. Uh, it was a five flowers kind of weekend. Okay, I didn't I go to say. I didn't go to you. It was a five flowers kind of weekend. Uh, chilling on the uh, patio or going to the pool. You can buy these seltzers, uh, the hippie sips, which are locally made. Uh, you can do the alcohol alternative like nowadays. They have all sorts of options. Did you go for the soda yet? No, I have not had the soda yet. Okay. <laughs> well, again, I want to see if the soda affects you. It's your 10. your experience. The soda's is, 10. Your experience is different from my experience. Your soda's 10. I want to see what the soda does. Too. All right. We'll bring it for Thursday. See it's what happens. Delicious. <laughs> Just do, I'll I'll start drinking it an hour before the show. <laughs> no. You'll be, no. Yeah, let's do Don't it. Don't do that. No, bring, me the, no, the show bring, me the, bring me the soda. I'm not doing the show. I'll do, it, I'll do it 30 minutes before. <laughs> bring me the soda. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> no, it, uh, the real the real winner for me out of Nature's Relief uh, as of late have been the sleep gummies. Yes. And they have a variety of sleep gummies. Some have Delta 8, some have Delta 9, some are just straight just CBD, CBD, which yeah. is what I'm using. And I have been sleeping great, right. great deep sleep. Again, go to Nature's Relief Hempstore.com. That's R E L. R E L E A F. Man, I am just struggling. Am I am I having a five <laughs> flowers you, now? Did you have the soda now? No, I didn't. If I did, I'd be like, yo, where's the two roosters at? Yeah. That's how I would be. Oh, they were out at the UNC Health Championship this week. Yes. Only the OG flavors. So you know what I had to do? Coffee bourbon. Good stuff. Actually, somebody had emailed us. I think it was I think it was an email and they had the coffee bourbon. They're like, okay, Joe was right. So like you said, Whoa! It was, it's been a great weekend for Joe was right. Head on over to two roosters.com. You can check out all their flavors, uh, the rotating flavors across the triangle. And oh, uh, you can bring they, some pints home. They have oh wait a second, hit pause because they have a new coffee flavor this month. Yeah. I don't want to get it wrong. Okay. It's but I'm I am up. I'm slightly upset that they only had the OG flavors out at. I mean, there's only the so much. There's only so much you can do while you're out there, man. I know. You know, you gotta keep it to I the know. basics sometimes. Hold up, coffee cookie dough. Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> I might need that on Thursday. Come after, on, man. After I have the soda, man. Maybe that's what. <laughs> maybe that's what we do. Man. Maybe that's what we do. Just be Woo. on the lookout for that. Again, go to tworoosters.com. Let's get out of here on some Hey Joe questions. I have a Hey Joe question for you. You all right? So we're we're supposed to we're we're planning on doing something at Crank Arm. Yeah, yes. Crank Arm brings you uh, Hey Joe. Go to CrankArmBrewing.com, downtown location. You and I have been kicking around the idea of going to Crank Arm, firing up the grill with our friends at the Butcher's Market, and just chilling. Now we don't necessarily need to do a show from there because I think you just hit on the right one. You were looking at the Red Hat yep. concert lineup. All right, you said so. three. You said three elevens coming. 311. But 311 is on a Saturday? On a Saturday in August. I don't care. Okay. I don't care. If Why don't we just hang oh. out? Why don't we just hang out on a oh, Saturday? Oh, no. What? Oh, no. What? Oh, no. Please tell me it's not a country act. Uh, Well, Bailey Zimmerman is very good. I don't know who he is. I know. You wouldn't like him. <gasps> oh, there it is. Tuesday? Yeah. Tuesday, August 27th. Yeah. I don't want to come back down from this cloud. Oh, you want to hang out for Bush? It's taking me all this, all this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to hang out on a random ass Tuesday for Bush? Correct. Okay. But we could do both. Who wouldn't? Uh, so August 10th, 311. And then Bailey Zimmerman, who you would not like. Yeah. But it's good. I like Bush and I like 311. Okay. Bailey Zimmerman, June 28th. Now, I feel like 311 would be vibes. Also, I feel like <laughs> things that only you and I would possibly know and or care about. One time we gave away the those tickets to that game and the and, guy was like, oh yeah, I'm on my way to see Goose. Oh yeah. Goose is going to be here June 18th. I will not be here. Okay. For June. I will per, not well, be here. perfect. Dwight Yoakam? I'd do that. Gary Clark? Ooh. Clark's good. Gary Clark is good. What day is that? That's our long leaf day. Oh, okay. 13. Okay. Gary Clark is good though. I'd go see Eric Clark. All right, so look, the bottom line is we're trying to find out a time to hang out at Crank Arm and then just basically enjoy a free concert. Yeah. While we're chilling at Crank Arm outside. Yeah. I feel like 311, I don't care if it's a Saturday, we can just go and hang out. We can make it work. Amber would be the color of my energy for that kind of day. Yeah. I'm all about it. So you you want to you talk to Adam about that? 
Yes. Okay. We'll but talk we want to do something before then, though. Well, this yeah, is summer. That's, that's, true. that's true. That's true. That's true. That's good. Okay. I'm, I'm with you on that. We're, we're still workshopping this one. Clearly. So head on over to Crank Arm Brewing. Can't crank but you can, you can, you can, you can go anytime you want. At Crank Arm. You can go West anytime Davy you want. Street. Great spot. Uh, speaking of uh, great beer, you, you had talked about <laughs> texting Jared. Jared had actually texted us. He had his, he had a hey Joe question. If you're a corporate champion of the OG, you get frontline access to hey Joe questions. You get direct texting. Okay, to us. now you could you could text us if you want on the OG sports phone. Right now on nine four 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 two two one one. But Jared asked a question. Um, you know, basically asking that uh, would you give, would you pay $13,000 to participate in the Coach K Academy at Duke? They just had their 21st Coach K Academy. And I knew this was the case because I was perusing Twitter and I saw Duke basketball's official Twitter account acting as though they just won a championship. I'm like, what has happened? Oh, it's the K Academy. So if you're watching on YouTube, uh, they had tweeted this out, raise it up. There's confetti. Coach K looks good, by the way. Retirement has done Coach K some some good. Uh, there's confetti. There's guys crying after winning the hard-fought run to a K Academy title. Uh, there's the handing of the trophy from Mike Krzyzewski himself. And then the confetti starts going. I mean, this is quite the experience. And you know what? I better get some freaking confetti if I'm going to pay $13,000. Just say, you know what I would want for 13 k What would you want for 13 k <laughs> Joe? Better be a little bit more than confetti. That trophy. <laughs> <sighs> so I pulled up the coach. Actually, I think the price of that brick has come down, man. I has think it? it used to peak at like 20, 30, maybe even 40. So I am looking at the Coach K... Uh, registration form, and you have to be a minimum of thirty-five. You got to put your shoes run for president. You got to you get put your shoe size in. It includes one camper and one guest. There's also a golf, like fantasy camp too. Okay, for this that you get to hang out at uh, the Washington Duke. Um, you got to put your credit card number, all that stuff. Sign a waiver, emergency contact. Because yes, yeah, the health plan ID cracks me up. Because if you're over thirty-five trying to play hoops at Cameron Indoor and you hurt something. Not a good Which idea. is highly <laughs> likely that's something. You have, now, here's the thing. Younger me would have roasted something like this. Okay. But older me understands the whole, like, I'm going to pay crazy amounts of money to live out some sort of fantasy camp experience. And $13,000 actually is not that bad of a Relatively price. Relatively speaking. For that sort of a thing. Did your out. dad pay something similar to go to a my F1 dad, race? My dad dropped like $5,000 <laughs> to go to an F1 weekend in Miami. <laughs> yeah. So it is what it is. He didn't meet Kay. He didn't get any confetti. Right. I went to space camp. I don't even, I want to ask my parents how much that cost. In 2024 dollars? Yeah, that was a Shit. lot. Shit. Junior Kane's cost almost that much. No, I'm kidding. At least it was a, at least your brother ended up in the program. There is, there is that. There yeah. is that. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and like travel, like all the travel sports and stuff like that. When you put it all together, the registration, uh, the cost involved <sighs> for equipment, sir. all of those stuff, you're probably paying more than that. So you know what? $13,000 to go live out my fantasy dreams at Cameron Indoor Stadium. So be it. You also probably have it. Is the, that's yeah, the other there's part of that it, too. Right? There is that. Too. Or, or not fishing in the same waters here. No, <laughs> no, no. As much as I love to give the Dukes to, a hard uh, time. To, to, par to paraphrase Jay-Z, what's $13,000 to a Duke grad like me? You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Now, what would the state equivalent be? <sighs> it's got to be something with Elliot, right? I mean, it's got to be Elliot. Oh, maybe it's fly fishing with, uh, with Dave Dorn. They, I think they're trying to do something I think like they are that doing something with like uh, that. whatever the collective is now. Yeah, one I don't pack even know what it is. With Carolina, it's a piece of cake, man. Carolina. You get to go golf with Roy. Mm. Or do you get to go to Alexander Julian and pick out some patterns mm. with him? No, I think it's the, the Jordan wall. Mm. I think that's what it is. You get a picture on the Jordan wall? Where you go in and you get to pick out a shoe. I mean, you are putting, you are putting 13. <laughs> although it's kind although of, that might not even cover the cost uh, of, although of I do, one custom shorts, to be perfectly honest. I do feel, I do feel like if you do have some fantasy experience, some UNC family type experience that Michael Jordan is involved in, I feel like you can make your money back just by gambling against him. Yes. He but typically you still loses have to, money on the golf course. Oh, I thought you meant like basketball buys because no, 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 out no, there no. and school oh, you a no, little no, no, bit. No. Oh, yeah, he will absolutely dot yeah. you on the basketball court. I'm talking yeah. about you get to go golf with uh, with Michael. My my guess is you can probably <sighs> win some money. You can win some money off of him, 
or play the quarters game with him. Like from uh, uh, we can gamble on anything with Michael. Like let's be honest. Right. I'm, that's from the saying. guy over here betting on hand handball. And if if Michael Jordan ever line. if Michael Jordan <laughs> ever came up to Eford Studios, you would absolutely set up the little uh, putt putt situation. Mm and bet him not even sure it needs to be that complicated like probably not <laughs> like i said it could be like last dance quarters yeah. right here you know i'm in <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go to the og sports phone you can call it 919-444-2211 uh, you can text it as well if you'd like but let's go to uh a hey joe for that hey joe's first time long time this is more of a summer podcast slash radio topic called Urban Legends. I've always read that NC State and Nike do not get along since Jimmy V was a Nike coach and under his reign, the players were selling the shoes. Thus, Phil Knight wanted to make an example out of us and never sponsor us again. That's why we've been bouncing around LA Gear, Adidas, Converse, Chris Corsi on the Unitard uniforms. So, yeah, just wanted to see if that was true or not. All right. Well, first of all, the Unitard was Nike. Yes. Number one. Yes, this was about Jimmy V, but not in the way that you think, in this sense. There were people not only with Nike, but also ESPN and the Jimmy V Foundation who felt like NC State did Jim Valdano wrong. Mm. Okay. That's why you there was like a, a whole 10 year period there where it was like, what is this quite what what is this relationship that you have of the of this guy? Right. Like how many times have you seen an ESPN thing where there's not even a mention of NC State? Sure. Sure. Right? Like, where was he? Well, I don't know, but he, he was this amazing person, right? So that's number one. There was but Here's how you know that it wasn't about Jimmy V and it wasn't about like Phil. It was Phil Knight part dead wrong, dead wrong. That wasn't, they were trying, not trying to make an example of people selling issues. No, dead wrong. Here's how you know. When Chuck Amato was here, when he came over from, from Florida State and Philip Rivers was here, the football team wore Nike. Mm -hmm. K. Yao had a relationship with Nike. K. Yao had a contract with Nike. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that happened post Valvano, right? The real issue between Nike and NC State now is you have there's le first of all there's levels to your sneaker contracts, right? And Nike has elite schools. Mm -hmm. Carolina is obviously one of them. Duke is obviously one of them. Uh, but like Ohio State is obviously one of them. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a another like like Wake Forest has a Nike contract, yes. but they're not an elite school. Mm -hmm. So essentially, what those schools get, the elite schools get better treatment. They get better stuff. Uh, if we're being perfectly honest right now, they got better recruits and better players from the Nike circuit because it behooved Nike to have their best players at mm -hmm. Kentucky, Carolina, Duke, right? I'm not saying that was nefarious. I'm just saying put the dots together. Man, just here. Go, please just, just go to the Louisville Adidas thing, man. Right. And you find out how the sausage is made. So Nike, that's number one. You're not going to be an elite school. Mm -hmm. So now you're just basically, be, you're going to be Nike for the sake of being Nike. And if you're NC State, you're already competing with Duke in Carolina, you don't want to be relegated to a second level with your own sneaker company. That's number one. Number two, Nike is notorious for, even with NBA players, basically paying less than those other companies because they're Nike. Mm -hmm. And number two, they give you more merch and more swag and stuff like that, but they don't give you more money. Mm -hmm. Adidas and Under Armour kind of changed all of this by basically saying, here, uh, yes, I'm going to give you a lot of merch. Yes, I'm going to give you a lot of swag, but I'm also going to give you straight cold, cold hard cash. Mm -hmm. So now you add all those things up, and you're like, you're sitting here, you're NC State, you're going, yes, I would rather be, I'd rather be prioritized by Adidas than on the back of the bus with Nike, and I'd rather have the cash from Adidas and or Under Armour, who they came close to, and whatever that was with Debbie, because Debbie obviously knows the, the founder of, of Under Armour yeah. from Maryland and has a relationship with him. And they, and they came close. And Mark ultimately said, no, I want to stay with Adidas Gottfried. So that's what it's about now. Back then, yes, you know, there were some hard feelings about how it ended with Valvano. Mm -hmm. and, but no, you had Kei Yao and you had Chuck Amato with Nike deals. So it's not about, oh my God, we're never going to do business with them again. Ultimately, it, this comes down to Nike. And if you, you can see it with who they endorse now too, because guess where Anthony Edwards isn't? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and Nike's a little bit struggling right now beyond LeBron. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. because they missed on Steph mm-hmm. and you know they had Kyrie who they invested in. We get back to those problematic comments. They dropped him. Yep. KD is another one that they heavily invested in. Didn't but nobody work. rides for KD. John ja, ja Morant is someone who they saw as who was next. And then he got into all kinds of trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, they've had all kinds of issues with Kobe's estate mm-hmm. and, and his um, widow. So, you know, Nike's in a situation where they were just like, hey, we're Nike. Even with like, I remember like TJ Warren always wanted to wear Nike and did. Yeah. But ultimately, you don't get the same amount of money. Mm-hmm. That's why you see an Anthony Edwards. That's why you, I'm not sure where Wembenyama is, but that's why you see these guys go with different shoe companies because they're actually being paid. Mm-hmm. And it's not just, hey, you should wear Nike for the honor of wearing Nike because we have the best stuff. I mean, God's on truth right now. You see, because you, know, you had posted the picture of Roy with the shoes and yep. the Jordans. There's a reason they keep reissuing Jordan number one and Jordan number three and Jordan number 10. Classics never go out of style, man. But they're also a thousand times better looking than what they wear now. Yes. If you ever look at the stuff that Armando Baycott and some of those other guys wear, because they, they, if they're trying to be like, they're they're trying to wear what Nike's wearing now. No, but here's, but here's they're not, no, 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 they're not appealing. Here's, but here's where you make the mistake. You're not the demographic they're going after. but but I almost am in the sense that ones, threes, fives, tens. That's these what are all, you grew up with. Right. But those are all the attractive, innovative ones. The ones that they're... I'm just saying, if you look now, nobody's out there wearing Jordan 30s. No. Okay? Even Luca's stuff, Luca's their new Jordan guy. Even his stuff, it's kind of crap. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying Adidas makes unbelievable stuff, but why is Anthony Edwards with Adidas? Yeah. Again. I would simply point out that tastes change. Sure. And the younger, you know, we saw this last year where it was, why is everybody wearing the bright colors and all this? Stuff? Right. That's what the kids are into. Right. And what we're into is completely different. I mean, I can look at a pair of New Balance 574s and go, classic dad shoe. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's, that's what it all comes down to. And for lack of a better term, you know, like the pandas, like all that kind of stuff, I just associate that with adult shoes. Those are like people dress, use those to dress up now. That, that's that's what I see. But when I talk to my 16 year old about you know what's hot, what's not, that, that kind of stuff, you, we're talking about older demographic stuff at this point. So when I look at what Armando Baycott is wearing, I don't associate that as something that I would. No, I mean wear like or, on or, the court is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like style. I'm saying like if you look at it though, you look at me like, yeah, yeah. Again, I just come that and it, then it, what that stuff is for us. What you call it won't let Duke Nike won't let Duke wear Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the, I actually do like all the LeBron stuff. Even though I do, even though I, do, I will see, I will see Duke assistants wearing Jordan shoes. They have uh, seemed to have softened the, you can wear the ones. Because yes. Everybody loves the ones. Everybody loves the ones, man. All right. We got, uh, we got one more OG sports phone. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Benny Mac here. Long time listener, first time caller. Uh, first of all, you guys are doing great. Uh, second, I was listening to a podcast the other day. I think y'all were talking about beach music, and I swear, I thought one of y'all started humming Nessun Dorma, the opera. I thought it was Gilio. And I thought, I started, I started giggling to myself. It was fantastic. I was like, this is like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. You come for the, for the shenanigans and, and the silliness, and you get a little bit of culture. So kudos to y'all. But I do have a serious question here, and it's for Jillio because he's the gambling master, the gambling was wizard. It's about placing bets on golf. When is it better to place bets on golf? Before the tournament or after the cut? You guys are great. I have all the T-shirts, five stars, 10 out of 10 when listen again, positive vibes only. Keep it up, fellas. Thanks so much. Were you humming opera? I was. Okay. Yeah, I gave it to you. Um, that's fantastic. I love that. Number one. Uh, that's a great point about Bugs Bunny, too. Like you, when you would watch those cartoons. Oh, that's like, all I got what, what, what was that song? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, golf gambling is basically this Scotty Scheffler is like either ruining or making golf gambling wonderful, depending on what your point of view is. Okay. When he wins, you're screwed. Okay. <laughs> but when he's in a tournament, because his odds are so low, but right. when he's in a tournament, he is going to artificially inflate everyone else. Mm-hmm. You probably missed this. But last week, I took Bobby McIntyre to win in. The Colonial. I'm, I'm, yes, I did miss that. The odds were 10 plus 10,000. Okay. 
Joe, we wouldn't be sitting here right now if Bobby Mack did this week what he if he did last week what he did this week. I see. Okay. I see. So if Scotty Scheffler's in the field, it does help you to take someone else pre-flop. All right. But there's nothing wrong with after the first round taking somebody, after the second round taking somebody. Because again, yesterday I took Bobby Mack in mm-hmm. the last round. So it's all season to taste with 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 golf. You're going to get better odds like that if it's a longer shot. Right. And it's also better at the beginning of the year to take your majors. You get better odds because all those numbers start coming down. I see. See what I'm saying? I see. But no, God, that is the beauty of golf gambling is you can keep re-upping depending on the round. And if, but if the caveat being at Scheffler at plus 400, which is super low for golf, mm-hmm. if he wins, there's nothing you can do about it. Okay. Because you're not going to make good money on him. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, we'll get out of here on this from Daniel. Hey, Joe, how did Joe always get tickets? Uh, this is from a Dave McMenamin tweet. Nightmare first half for the Wolves. Blah, 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 blah. Some AI generated <laughs> image. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, come on. I see. Okay. Come guys, on. Guys, guys, come on. guys. Okay. If you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> you can see the, uh, the, the picture here. Um, <laughs> this is kind of turning in like a Scott Van Pelt thing. You know, like when Van Pelt, you know, somebody sees a ball guy <laughs> with uh, with glasses somewhere that looks like Van Pelt, and they they send Van, Van Pelt the picture. Uh, I feel like we're getting to a point where uh, you see a vaguely ethnic man with a beard who's balding with glasses, and you're going, "Hey, there's obvious." Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I actually wouldn't be insulted by the way that the guy looked. I would just be insulted that it was a grown ass man wearing a jersey. <laughs> You would never wear a jersey. I would never wear a. I would never wear a jersey. B. I would not. Let me print out this AI generated image of a guy crying. No, I would never do that. I would never do that. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. We'll see you on Tuesday.